Don't despise the small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Zechariah 4.10 in the New Living Translation. A scripture my mom gave me when I told her I wanted to start a Christian esports and content creation organization, believe it or not, back in 2017 during my final year of high school. And that Christian esports and content creation organization plan collapsed hard in 2022. And it's one of the things I actually thank God that it collapsed because do you have you seen the state of esports and gaming content creation nowadays? But I don't regret the time I spent grinding out every single video on that channel, playing Fortnite till 2 a.m. during COVID with the boys and trying to pop off in the Minecraft space. I mean, we also got featured on a top of Warzone Moments video as the thumbnail clip. Well, the main reason you're here, guys, this is our thumbnail clip. 200 IQ, very entertaining, multiple points of view. Let's go. And after that feature, we thought our channel was going to pop off, but it never did. But I don't regret the time that I spent on those videos because through it was how I learned how to edit and understand how YouTube works for the Explanations channel. And from that experience, I picked up a new go-to scripture after 2022 for some time, which was Proverbs 16.3 in the ESV, which says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. So, you know, we made the plans, committed them to the Lord and waited for him to establish those plans, right? No, of course not. After committing a couple of plans to the Lord, all to move, uh, yeah, all of them fell flat throughout 2022 to 2023. And in late 2023, I finally understood the importance of supplementing those two scriptures with Proverbs 19:21 that says, "Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails." And in this episode of the Keto Shame Initiative podcast, we're going to talk about how God made every single plan I had in my heart for the past couple of years fail in exchange for his purpose, which has led to the point where what I can only describe as my dream Christian spiritual warfare piece, comic book series and video game that I thought was going to be near impossible to achieve is actually becoming a reality much faster than I ever imagined. <laughs> Welcome all to the 11th episode of the Kiroshim Initiative Podcast, our monthly podcast at this point where we either interview one of the Christian creators of the comics or hopefully in the future video games and TV shows that we cover on the Explanations channel or if we're not interviewing someone you get an X Rumble and in this episode since the last X Rumble of me listen my top eight favorite Christian superheroes somehow became I think our most viewed episode of the podcast you're getting another X Rumble today. But this one is about my own creative endeavors that are inspired by a lot of the comics and stuff that we cover here on the channel. But before we get into that, just some formality stuff out of the way. I just want to say thank you to all 120 or something of you. Well, the 1,000 of you that tune back in month after month into the channel to watch the content. I really, really really appreciate every single one of you especially ones that comment and of course the ones that don't comment and just look and watch the videos from the background your support and your just your time commitment to the channel whether it may be you watch these videos while doing the dishes doing chores or something or for white noise like i do with a lot of other youtubers just the fact to know that they are a thousand of you out there from all over the world that tune into this 
guy in his bedroom with a microphone and too many Christian comics to cover at time. Always come back month after month to check in. I really, I just want to say thank you and I appreciate every single one of your return viewers and your new viewers who would become a return viewer next month. Because like as someone who is busy and understands what it's like to try to fit in a lot of things into the short span of free time we have a day, the fact that people take the time out to listen to these podcasts week after week well the videos and then the podcast once a month because that is what my my current schedule that's what i could afford to do with my current time schedule i appreciate every single one of you so that's enough of me being sappy and thankful but i mean this video is kind of like a thanksgiving for the projects that i've been up to and let's start it off with talking about my multimedia studio that is currently edging the end of the trinidad business registration process it should, i'm pretty sure i'm at near the end of the um the end of the process and the name of the studio is called kidoshim studios which can be found at kidoshim studios that is k-e-d-o-s-h-i-m-s-t-u-d-i-o-s dot com on the internet <laughs> For some reason, my brain was trying to put something else after me.com, but it's just Kidushim Studios. And by Monday, we will have all our social media platforms up at Kidushim Studios on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. There won't be no co much content coming out of that until like the projects actually reach towards proper delivery. But, but still be sure to follow the Kidushim Studios social media pages when it come across your feed, which I most likely be making a general post about it on Monday. So what is Kidushim Studios? Well, Kidushim Studios, this is some official professional business speaker. I had to submit for my um, business plan and all those things you have to do when registering a company in Trinidad. Kidushim Studios operates as a startup based in Trinidad and Tobago. We specialize in development and production of multimedia content inspired by biblical stories, themes, and teachings. With expertise in game development, Unreal Engine virtual production, and comic book creation, we create our own in-house projects and render our services to other Christian and non-Christian themed projects. The word Kiddushim is a transliteration of the Hebrew word Kodeshim, which means set apart ones or saints in English. The word is used throughout the Old Testament in passages where it refers to God's people and their call to be set apart from the world. This call to be set apart resonates with our mission as an aspiring multimedia studio dedicated to advancing the biblically inspired video games, comics, and virtual production landscape. Whether that is accomplished through developing and publishing our own projects or providing our aid and expertise to the projects of other professing believers. Our ultimate goal is to position ourselves to be one of those set-apart alternatives that consumers are seeking in the rapidly growing indie entertainment market today, as well as to aid as many of those gospel-infused alternatives that we possibly can. Yeah. <laughs> that is finally put together the actual name and vision and mission behind the studio that will house my creative endeavors. If well, I don't know if many of you, many of you may or may not know that I work with Real Studios, headed headed by Steve Clary, the owner and founder of Revelation Media, as an Unreal Engine virtual production supervisor and environment artist. Recently, Steve Clary was at the Christian Worldview Film Festival, where he showcase some of the projects that i did all the environment and camera work on and i'm only allowed to showcase the projects and stuff that i work on which that job is well that job is pretty much my day job only allowed to showcase the projects and stuff from real studios once it has been publicly released and announced so i'm gonna run a snippet from steve clary's christian worldview festival presentation where he showcases the of a reel of what we have been working on at Real Studios. So you can say no to money to support missions. And if it's the other way around, you may have to say no to missions to support money. But I'm not saying one is over the other. We do both. So literally, we started just a couple months ago with our for-profit studios, 
um, called Real Studios. Uh, none of the animation has been put in, none of the facial expressions, none of that. It's just show you what, what we're starting to do and, and what we're, we're going to be doing more of in the world of animation. It has been uh, a lot of fun, <laughs> quite challenging, but a lot of fun to put those things together. And I can't wait for you guys to actually be able to see those films when they eventually hit the public. So look out for those and your boy's name in the credits when it eventually comes out. That's just honestly an amazing testimony. But, well, you guys... <laughs> If you're still watching at this point, I hope you didn't skip over the intro, but you heard in the intro of these three scriptures that I ran over on just fully understanding what it truly means to commit your plan to the Lord and he will make straight your paths as well as supplementing all of that with many of the plans in a man's heart, but is the Lord's will that shall prevail. Because in after stopping with the game of content creation, because it was becoming too stressful. For me in 2022 to like edit all the videos and then try to coordinate folks and stuff i also kind of realized that that was just uh plan my own plan and a god's desire for my life got it well but that 100 percent confirms through leaders and my mom uh, and stuff as my mom always said <laughs> my mom from the get-go when i started the esports content creation organization she always told me that x eventually gonna make your own games and stuff because the games and they that you're playing they don't actually glorify god like i understood I always understood the evangelism approach that i wanted to take with it which for the i believe arm um, of god esports actually does that um model quite well at least from the stuff i've seen of them i haven't watched them in a long time but at least when i was actually interested in joining arm of god esports back in 20 22 but my mom always told me that actually gonna make video games and comics and those kind of stuff because the things that you indulge in those things don't glorify god <laughs> and i was watching my mom like mommy i have no i had the desire to get into game development but for me it was impossible i would have never gotten into game development and stuff like that was so far-fetched to me in 2017 my desire was Going into game development was more far fetched for me than somehow finding investors to um, invest in a group of kids fresh out of high school who wanted to become the Caribbean version of Faceblood. Somehow, that plan that I had was more feasible than actually going into game development and comic book creation and stuff back in 2017 when I finished high school. Ah. I mean, sometimes you, you know, you just look back at your, your younger self and the decisions you were making and cringe. I cringe a lot when I look back, but I don't regret it. I don't regret the decisions. Even though I was like sprinting so far away from God's will, I don't regret it. And then in 2022, yeah, in 2022, when I put that down, 2022 was when I really began to get serious with the Explanations YouTube channel and set the personal goal 
of one video every week and i have made been doing that consistently through the what you say the highs and lows the ebbs and flows of life i have been doing that rather consistently along with shorts and stuff and from uh, put another side in 2022 when i was finishing my associate's degree in management with ue rotec in trinidad i wanted to go um i wanted to go to Fulton university now i'm skipping out a lot of things and there's a that would be a completely separate um <laughs> separate podcast by itself on that testimony of how God like completely shifted my life around but it is keeping this one relevant to information relevant to Kirishim Studios because God did an entirely insane breakthrough for me when I around the time I was finishing high school around the time I was finishing my uh associate's degree but in finishing when I finished my associate's degree I downloaded Unreal Engine for the first time in March, I think it's March, April, because my Unreal Engine account was made in February. So I believe I actually started digging around in the engine and doing the courses and stuff in the March, I believe. In March of 2022. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. If I remember correctly, March of 2022. I started digging around in Unreal Engine and did my, my first real, real project other than just like the Udemy courses I was doing was the City of David project that there is the full time lapse for that on the channel. I did that for the church I was attending at the time. They were having a their all years night. We call it in the Caribbean all years night. I think it's New Year's Eve is what it's officially called in the in the US and other places. The December the thirty first service. They wanted to do a fair based off of the story of Nefti-Boshet and King David on how King David went and rescued Saul's son from Lodeba and carried him into the king's palace. And that was the first like environment thing I did in 2022. And from that, I went on to doing, um, what did we do after that? I think we took a break for a while. Oh no, I went on to do the Pilgrim Progress film yeah started to piece together the no no i went on to try to adapt the pilgrim progress film into a short one level video game because at the youth the youth group for the church i was attending at the time had us watch that for homework and i fell in love with the i fell in love with the film and i wanted to turn it into a quick action rpg and well that project file End up, ended up getting corrupted with a hard drive crash that occurred in May 20 May last year. Yeah, wrong May last year. Yeah, that was sad. Because I actually got a four terabyte. So the yeah, I got a four terabyte SSD to put into my computer. I believe yeah, I believe that's how it was going. I got a four terabyte, yes. I got a four terabyte SSD for my birthday in May of May last year. But when I when I stripped down the computer, take out the GPU, because to get to the SSD slot, I had to take out the GPU. So take out the GPU and everything. Me and my brother put in the SSD into the NVM the NVMe dot two slot and everything, and put it back together. And the computer did not come on. It didn't come on. So I carried the PC out to out to a replay place that is walking distance from my home and when i carried it the guy apparently what it was was when i stripped it down there was just dust that got into i think the ram component or whatnot which was stopping the computer from posting and coming on at all so then he put it together and he thought i wanted to put the um he thought i wanted to put my operating system on my two terabyte is it terabyte? I think it's four terabyte. Yeah, on my four terabyte drive. And I told him, no, I don't want to put the operating system on that. I already have a drive in there that would be my operating drive. And this is for my creative stuff. I do want real engine related stuff, video game creation and stuff. Yeah, ain't it? And I want to put this stuff on that drive. And guys, so when he was showing me, just making sure that everything was all right with the computer, uh, was showing me into it and everything. And I was telling him, like, well, I'm not seeing the... um the drive that was already in my computer, the hard drive that was already in my computer. It's not popping up. And in my head, I'm like, oh, well, that just probably mean like, it, with some computers, when you put an SSD in it, 
the knocks off all the other drives in the sense of you have to go into the BIOS and tell it, well, look, the drive is here. Run with the internal, run with the internal drive and the hard drive and the SSD. And while I'm seeing that, I'm telling the guy that this guy, guys, he goes into Windows Petition for my hard drive that was already in the computer and does a, and he sees it and he's like, oh, let me try here. And he hits the um, format drive in order for it to pop up in Windows. And I'm just watching like, bro, why would you do that? And he was saying that it was on partition or something. But I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's not what it was. I'm pretty sure. Because I read up on it at first. So like, when you put a new drive into the computer, like SSD on the, on the SSD slot underneath the, gpu it would um it would do that and he factory set that drive and i lost all my all my projects at the time which was my city of david project and the program progress project file so that was dead for that was it that was dead with that but then i continued i think around that time we started our fight the good fight fight the good fight the fortnite um game which, if you haven't checked it out, you can be sure to check it out via our creator page, which I think is fortnite.com forward slash set apart. You know what? It's been a while since I plug it. Make sure, like, check out the trailer. For the audio listeners, you'll have to check out the video podcast, but let's just run the trailer. I haven't run that trailer in forever. We fight, we fight, just as many have before us. In this kingdom of ours, we don't watch the world touch. There is power to find that's breaking every stronghold, and the weapons of our warfare, not of earth but of heaven. And be sure to use code set apart if you play Fortnite or if your kid plays Fortnite. You can refer them to the video, let them check out the game and stuff as well. And use code set apart in Fortnite item shop. I am actually very close to my first Fortnite supporter creator code payout. So for all of you that have been using that code without me actually like plugging it a lot, like I only plug that code at the beginning of chapter one, at the beginning of at the beginning of every season, I do a graphic saying, use the code if you want to check us out. And you guys have pretty much spent close to 200,000 V-Bucks using that code in order for me to get a payout. I mean, I use the code too. And some of my buddies that I play Fortnite every... I play Fortnite once every season, like once every three months. And they play Fortnite regularly. So they use the code and it's been a joke in our group chat on who's using the code and who's not using the code. But... They are not the ones who is getting that number up to 200,000 V-Bucks used with my code in order to get a payout. So please continue to use the code. We are 5% away from the first payout. And that would go towards models for the parables, not just, yeah, the parables of the Rumman game for Pink Spade and Kaylee. But back to that, back to the timeline. We are in August, uh, July, yeah, July, after the Fortnite game was released and... I was looking to go get a full-time job. So going to get a full-time job at one of the places, one of the retail outlets down here. Was that really a retail outlet? For you, Trinidadians, I think I was looking to get a job in courts. Yeah, in um, courts down here. And I uh, was sending my resume out to get, sending my, was about to send my resume out and was contacting a, uh, lecturer from my time doing my associate's degree to put her down as one of my references and uh, when literally guys literally like literally i say literally three times because i <laughs> recuperating how we're gonna present this 
literally when I um I was in a Discord call with some friends that I work on another project that I can't talk about for a while. I was in a Discord call with them and one of the guys said LinkedIn. We were adding each other on LinkedIn and he said LinkedIn and I remembered that I messaged my lecturer via LinkedIn asking her for the response. So I went to check my email and LinkedIn and while checking my email and LinkedIn, I am getting a contact from my now well I think yeah i call it my boss but my now boss andrew Lebrizi, asking to do a quick consultation with me because they like the city of david project that i did as well as some of the stuff i did with the pilgrim progress thing and they are looking to get into unreal engine to do an environment and i was like no i'm literally looking to go and enter the job market <laughs> And I chatted with Andrew Lubrizi in August. And now, 11 months later, I am the future production supervisor for some of their future production supervisor and Unreal Engine journalist for some of their projects working from home with a 4090 computer that they shipped to me for the projects. And the amazing thing about that is that before, which I, I skipped that, I was actually a put a snippet of a put in some snippets of it. I was actually trying to get a full time scholarship with Full Sail University for their game development course because, as I say, I committed a lot of plans to the Lord after learning would be meaning of Proverbs sixteen three. My plans I was committed to the Lord was that somehow God was gonna make a way for me to get a full time game development scholarship to be able to pursue the game development vision that he has given me getting that scholarship to me was the only way i was only gonna be that to me was the only way i was gonna be able to do the um to do game development and make the connections that i need in order to pursue game development professionally and all those stuff of scholarship at full Sail university and i did not and i entered that scholarship competition not once but twice what the first time in january for the january 2020 Three Emerging Technology Scholarship and the second time for the June 2023 Emerging Technology Scholarship. Because the fact that just the thought that getting through with that, I like I literally made it to the final round with with the whiteboard problem solving. But reaching the final round with the whiteboard problem solving, I have no I actually have no I did not have any programming experience. So when they threw up to me, make this tea or a glass of ray or what would he write a FizzBuzz algorithm, which is Sakai stuff for actual programmers, I was brute forcing self-learning my way through Unreal Engine and game development by Udemy and watching a lot of Unreal Engine. Um Inside Unreal, inside Unreal live streams and reading the Unreal Engine documentation from the website, as well as Udemy courses I was doing. And when I didn't get through it with the second time, I was, I wasn't the second, the first time I was crushed. Yeah, I was going through a whole, that's, that's for the testimony, <laughs> that's for the full testimony e eventually that i'll share in a separate episode of the podcast trying to keep this relative to only condition related stuff but when i didn't get through in january i was crushed a bit but i was like i made it all the way to the final wrong of this i'm gonna do it again in june and when i did it again in june i made it all the way to the final wrong again but i mashed up the question that they asked the, the same question that i failed on with um in the January scholarship wrong when it came back when I got back a question in um the June scholarship wrong I destroyed that physical question that physical question had nothing on me I destroyed it so quickly that I had like 10 minutes of extra time and they gave me another question and I had no idea whether our class of three was on all those things <laughs> so from that I was like you know what I'm just gonna do game development and stuff game development and stuff on the side to whatever gigs I can pick up and I'm going to work a full-time job at one of the retail outlets here in uh, here in Trinidad. I think I was going to do information systems for the customer. So a kind of data entry desk job. And uh, from that, <laughs> with that, those plans, I literally pitched those plans to go on. I got the email from Andrew Lebrizi. And from the email from Andrew Lebrizi, it has, well, working with them with for almost what is the 
a year. It'll be a year in August, as I say, from a 1490 computer pursuing there, but doing it because full time job. Um, we work all day, yeah, pretty much all day, and uh, also have the time to do my own creative uh, passion projects. I mean, I haven't had a lot of time to actually code, that's why we haven't done a live stream in so long, but. All I could do, I could just thank God, guys. It's it's amazing. This is what give the full testimony. This is just like keeping things relative to me, Kirishin Studios related things. But eventually, I give that full testimony on uh, how Paul, that breakthrough board gave me. With regards to like something that was a stumbling block for me for five years. Yeah, five years. Yeah, since I was finishing high school, really came into effect that stopped me from doing a lot of things i couldn't get a job couldn't start university i actually started university two years late two years late from when i finished high school yeah i finished high school no four years four years no two years 20 yeah i finished high school in 2018 and i didn't start university for my associates until 2018 so i finished 2018 and i didn't start my associates until 2020 it is amazing that's somebody that i would share in full eventually one day on the podcast but i just was trying to keep it to the points that are relative to kiddo shame studios and yeah so well we have with kiddo shame studios <laughs> i don't know how to segue from that that is the testimony aspect of kiddo shame studios of getting towards putting aside all my plans all my concoctions thinking that my life has to go a certain way for certain opportunities to present itself and god watching down like <laughs> your thought relax yourself literally <laughs> and now we have kiddushim studios about to be a fully registered business in trinidad and tobago with our inaugural comic book series and video game coming out of the finishing the early concept stage and actually going into the production stage which we would talk about right now our first two projects out of kirishim studios is called intercession and parables of the setup and deception and the first one we will talk about is intercession which is our comic book series intercession is a three superhero series that offers a fresh take on the superhero genre with its fictional exploration of spiritual warfare drawing inspiration from the concept of intercessory prayer found in ephesians 6 verse 18 which says praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all the saints while other superhero tales might feature heroes gaining powers through radioactive spider bites or extraterrestrial origins our approach, our approach offers a refreshing departure. Instead, our cast is composed of heroes whose code names are primarily derived from hero words linked to an aspect of God's character, such as Nisi, Majin, Stesuri, and their abilities are not mere accidents or cosmic coincidences, but are instead rooted in biblical events and astounding metaphorical passages found within scripture. So, intercession is, as I say, I always had the idea idea of um a christian spiritual warfare comic book series this thing has that it has finally conceptualized itself into intercession but it was a idea that has been looping in my mind i think since high school yeah since high school because even with squadron gaming the mascot that i was creating for squadron gaming was based was actually going to be based off of um the shield for squadron gaming that i actually have a trademark for here in trinidad that's how deep into my own plans i was in my whole heart's desire i actually have a trademark for the squadron gaming um for the squadron gaming logo and a pendant for the squadron gaming logo that i had i have that pendant in gold for four years now with no chain <laughs> for the for the um pendant i got the pendant and i didn't i haven't gotten the chain fit in four years i think i'm finally gonna get the chain fit because the guy who made it i was still one of my gaming buddies some squadron gaming we still play well i still play video games with them from time to time oh well we talk on discord a lot let me know also a uh, segue in let me know also what games you guys have been into recently i've been playing a lot of destiny 2 final ship love that has been a lot of fun Die Hard, uh, Prismatic Titan, 
Captain America Bill with Monte Carlo and with the Sentinel Shield and that has been fun. But segueing her back into the idea of intercession. I always have the idea of a spiritual warfare theme comic book series that is rooted primarily in spiritual warfare on it takes a fictional approach to prayer. I was a Pentecostal. I am no longer I no longer prescribe to Pentecostal theology. That is a whole separate um thing. Whole separate thing with experiences. Church experiences and stuff. I've actually been out of church for a little while now, since um January. Yeah, been out of church since not January. So yeah, I've been at a home church since um January after uh, you know, don't want to go into that. <laughs> That's not part of what we're talking about today. Maybe another time on another podcast. But yeah, um from how my mind visualized the visualized spiritual warfare, especially Steve Good's spiritual warfare art collection, which is how my mind visualized spiritual warfare on uh, uh, and how the power Christians have on counteracting the devil. I always want to make a series that is rooted in fictional spiritual warfare. You know, like you have the armor of God and the sword of the spirit, but then I went on a <laughs> path while I'm reading through the Bible. There are some scriptures that I just see that this would be an awesome ability in a Destiny or Genshin Impact style game, and I turned it into a video game ability. I was compiling it, an entire list. I think I have like over 50 of them fully concepted out. And uh, with descriptions of, of how I would see it working in a video game or even in a comic book setting in a Word document. And intercession, after many iterations, praying on it a lot, and uh, talking to my uh, theological advisors for the series, it has finally settled itself as uh, intercession. At first, it was named... What was it named? I actually... The concept... The period of, like, putting... Taking the idea out of my head and putting it on a Word document came about after Bill Rupp of The Remnant allowed me to create a character, which I think there's a video on the channel as well, on the character set apart one if you guys have uh, not seen that video you could check it out and uh, set apart one after creating set apart one actually did a little like fanfic for set apart one and how he will exist in the remnant universe the set apart one subscription is a little bit of a cringy self-insert into the remnant because he is a social media personality just like what i am aspiring to be with the explanations channel and on his chess he literally has the explanations logo with the crosshair with the the crosshair with the magnifying glass with the cross inside the magnifying glass that is the official logo of the explanations he has that on his chest but from concept and such a part when i started to slowly build out a team around him i think one night i was just like putting such a part one and asking uh, chat gpt actually to generate set apart one as like what would it do be like as a overwatch hero or what would set apart be like as a marvel strike force hero or as a league of legends hero as a valorant agent and from doing that i was just like after doing it a while i literally just started you know what i started coming up with the concept the concept of different characters similar to set apart one and i came across a bible life article listing out all the names of god which is by names of god it means that stuff like um jova rafa jova nisi jova siskanu jova tesuri jova majin jova naki jova el no uh elion is the jova elion no jova esri all those words linked to an aspect of god's character i got the idea literally got the idea that night on like this could actually be a really cool concept. And I talked to it with my mom. And then I started to concept it more, flesh it out more. And we got intercession with the six, the first six main characters. Uh, I repurposed Set Apart One. So there's the second iteration of Set Apart One and turned him into Kodash, which is the Hebrew word for holy. And he is the leader of the group. And around him, he has Omega, which is actually based, inspired off of my older. Well, she isn't my oldest sister friend from church who has become like a sister to my family. She, uh, yeah, 
Omega based off of that person. Then there's Rafa, who is based off of my younger sister. My mother is a cancer survivor. And during my mother's cancer journey, my sister was the one who was my mom's home homemaid, no home nurse, what we call her. We call, for a period of time we call her nurse bull. But she was like my mom's nurse in regards to all the things that you do with a someone who is going through chemotherapy and radiation and all the nine yards my sister was in this <laughs> my sister was the home nurse for that she was i think 13 14 at the time that she, she was going through high school and uh, from my mom's cancer journey for me personally it showed me how god may not heal someone but like snap of the finger heal someone but he could provide favor through the medical system or while someone is going through a a um while someone is going through an ailment or something like that some people some there are stories where god has stories and testimonies where god provided people with miraculous healing but there are other testimonies where god didn't provide miraculous healing like instant miraculous healing everything is gone all tumors and stuff are gone but the person went through the entire journey but there's no shadow of a doubt that God's hand was guiding and paving the path through that entire cancer journey. For at least for my, well, when it comes to my mom and other testimonies I've heard. And Rafa is a character that was created from that perspective. She's based off of my sister. My, she's 19. Yeah, my sister's 19 now. And she started a medical, medical degree last year based off with her inspiration for starting a medical degree based off of her time taking care of my mom and the care that the nurses at the hospital my mom did her chemotherapy and stuff but the, yeah the hospital my mom did her chemotherapy and stuff gave to my mom the care that they gave my mom it inspired my sister that she wanted to go into the medical field and rafa she wrote a really nice um for her first term she wrote a really because her like one of her first assignments is why you want to get into the medical field and she wrote a really, really touching paragraph. Well, her reason why. And I took that paragraph and turned her into a superhero. Well, a Christian spiritual warfare superhero that is based on the likeness and stuff of my sister and speculating on what my sister would be like in five years is what I wrote Rafa out to be. What I think, where I think my sister would be in five years is what Rafa would be. Because, like, the intercession cast is about, um, I aim for like 20 to 26 is the age range for the story of most of the cast members. And that is what, yeah, that is, um, uh, Rafa. Then, so I talk about Kadosh, Omega, Rafa, we have Anya. Now, Anya is <laughs> the inspiration for Anya. Uh, there was, there is this Christian. She's a professor? Christian. There's this Mandarin pop star named Gem. G-E-M. She's a professor in Christian and has some like Christian articles and Christian art interview conversations and stuff. And I was listening to her Revelation <laughs> album while walking to the gym one day. And while walking to the gym one day, I just got this entire concept for this for this um character this um character and then that was actually the thinking of the story thinking of it just like the idea just hit my head and i wrote it down and then we have anya and anya is not a word that is linked to um like juvenaka juvenisi and stuff anya is a female hebrew name for god's eyes and anya is a blind um the premise of Anya is she is a fashion, she's a fashion designer turned blind. She's a fashion designer who is blind from an accident that was forewarned to her. She, yeah, she was blind in an accident. And uh, from being blind in an accident, she was gifted with the gift of discernment. <laughs> like, get gift of discernment that is much more powerful than everyone on the squad. That is Anya. Just going, just giving you guys a bare information eventually in future podcasts and individual videos on the Kido Shim Studios channel. And even on this channel, we will go deeper into the concepts of the characters. But that is Anya. That thought literally came while I was listening to a. Chinese, the Mandarin pop star. 
named Jem. One of her tracks. One of, in one of the tracks there is a um in one of the tracks there is a they say one of the verses from Psalms 23 in English. Yeah, one of the verses in Psalms 23 just breaks up into Psalms 23, where it's like, Do I walk through the valley of deep shit? I play I just play I just play a snippet of it here in the um, video right now. Yeah, and one day I was walking to the gym and I just got the concept thought for Anya and then that's Anya. And Anya is actually my mom's favorite character of all the intercession characters. And then apart from Anya, there is Naki. And Naki is the Hebrew word for to strike or smite. And Naki is based off of the three sons of Zariah combined into one character so that is abishai joab and Ash and ashahel seeing throughout first and second samuel they were joab was david's general abishai was the commander of the well no i think joab was the commander of the army and abishai was a general for david i can't remember 100 percent, but it's i actually did it I actually have on the channel a video for each one of the brothers when we used to do Unsung Bible Stories. It's going to start back doing those soon. But the job is all three of them combined into one character. And the final character of the main squad is Majin, which is the Majin... I don't know if... I, it's, I should be ashamed. I'm saying these Hebrews. I don't even know if I'm saying it in the correct pro pronunciation fit. But Majin is the Hebrew word for the Lord... For shield. Majin is the Hebrew word for... Shield, and it is usually seen in the passages where it talks about the Lord is my shield, and unashamedly, he is was partly inspired by one of my all-time favorite fictional characters, Reinhardt from Overwatch. I am a dirty, but not dirty. I am a Reinhardt one trick in Overwatch, and <laughs> Margin is partially inspired by. Reinhardt and some of the stuff Reinhardt does and yeah that's Majin. So that is the characters of Intercession. They I recently got my first pinup, complete pinup done by pencils and inks was done by Ken Bowden and the coloring and digitalization of it was done by Justin Fernandez. We have a kind of collab post over on Instagram that you could check out where Justin does showcases the um the process he took to digitalizing and coloring kind of stuff, but it came out amazingly. The concepts and everything, especially like the kind of like relationship I've developed with Ken Bowden and now with Justin, because it has just been. I just thank God for it because the thought of seeing the concepts and they come to life, even with everything that God has done in my life, I honestly didn't think it would have been so quick. I am good to be real. <laughs> I am a guy talking to you with a 4090 computer. And I honestly didn't think... A 4090 computer that God blessed me with. And I honestly didn't think that the project was going to come to pass so quickly. Where I get my first official pinup and everything for it that quickly. Really and truly, I didn't think it would have come to pass so quickly. But now, we have pinups. And we're going to have another pinup. Well, as the pinup that I was using, if you're watching the visual... The visual, um, the video podcast, you would see the picture that has all the intercession characters on the screen. That is another one from Ken Bowden. It is currently on his Twitter. Uh, that is, well, I'm going to get a scan of that. And we're going to have another colorist who, we're going to have another colorist put some colors to that. And that is going to be awesome. And we have started putting together the full script for the first a couple issues of uh, intercession. I had the plan, I had the outline of what I wanted to be done. Soon, we have the outline of what I wanted to be done. Now it's just on to um, getting it scripted. And the guys of the comics that we have covered, such as Evan David and Bill Roop, 
uh, on to be my advisors for the series when it comes to story and just helping me out with navigating the comic book. So that's Intercession, uh, the Kidushim Studios' first comic book line. The next major project within Kidushim Studios is called Parables of the Setapad. Now, Parables of the Setapad actually predates Adonai's Arsenal by a uh, by months. I think no, but not by months, by years. Because I think Parables of the Setapad initially was called Kidushim, which is the hero of a Setapad, and Kidushim eventually after much shuffling became the name of the company that is registered in trinidad to house all my um, creative endeavors and from parables of the set apart the name even though the concept existed long before long before intercession i thought did i just say adam and arsenal it existed long before intercession the working name for Adana, for intercession was adonai's arsenal while i was coming up with the concept and building a team a wrong Kadosh, which is who was the second iteration of the character set apart one that went to the remnant. But he set apart one character from the remnant after me falling in love with the remnant books, became came out to parables of the set apart. I hope this isn't getting confusing because this is you're getting rumble X again for this podcast. So as I talk, I piece things together and I'm glancing across at my script. But Parables of the Set Apart is ultimately going to be this Christian spiritual warfare, well, it could be spiritual warfare and non-spiritual warfare theme anthology series that doesn't really have, well, anthology series doesn't have, all the stories aren't going to be connected together. I have ideas for the stories, but some of the stories would feature Set Apart one in these one-shot style, one-shot style um, comics as well as games it's a multimedia anthology series and that would be the platform that set apart one which is the roman character the third iteration of that character which is based off of the remnant character but joshua whitaker early in december last year put together a really cool concept art that he presented to be used as a, um, could be used as a channel mascot for my videos, the setup part one. Use that as a channel mascot for the videos, but I don't see myself doing that kind of content. So with much prayer and godly counsel, that character is being turned into the main character, character of my first couple video games and levels for the first and our first, very first video game called Parables of the Set Apart Deception, which is an action RPG where you embark on the journey of the Set Apart One, a faithful warrior clad in the armor of God and armed with the sword of the Spirit, navigating the spiritual realm by following the straight and narrow path, a battle against the forces of darkness, topple adversary stronghold, and answer the divine call to be set apart. And in that game, in those games, you will be, you will be playing as the set apart one so that is parables of the set apart deception and parables of the set apart as a whole the name parables part of the name does come from parables of the remnant because i love those books so those books are some of my favorite remnant books and favorite christian theme comic books so i took the name wholesale from bill rock parables of the remnant and the parables of the set apart that will feature the adventures of the set apart one and other anthology-based stories that are not set around the set apart one. That most of the or the initial ones would be based around the set apart one. Because for parables of the set apart, when my goal is to have this game release in March of 2025, it is a well action RPG in a, a vein similar to something like it's not Elden Ring inspired. You know, you're seeing in how the setup. I did use a Souls like course in unreal engine uh udemy souls like course in unreal engine to put together this prototype that you see on the screen but the game itself is not going to be in the style of elden ring i have a unique i have a i have a um it'll be more like hack and slash base like genshin impact and infamous and those kind of games is the combat style i am aiming for with parables of the set apart Deception. I recently finished the entire story, the direction I want to take the story, and soon I would be starting my full 
a full 100, I think, or 130 hour coding course by um, Steve Armbry on Unreal Engine on how to properly put together a code base for a combat uh, game playability system driven video game inside of Unreal Engine. And I think I can talk about it publicly, but well, as well, we would have we are aiming to have a time comic for Parables of the Set of Fat Deception done by the guys over at Star Cross Comics. They did tell me that they are willing to produce it. I just have to, you know, make sure to provide the things that need in that needed to produce it, such as the funds and those kind of stuff. But we will also have um, it also aiming to have a tie in comic that it would be written by Evan David and aiming to be written by Evan David and Joe Spicer for the project. That is not set in stone. I just think I could talk about it publicly because I don't think that will fall through. But that is a part that is on the table for Parables of the Set Apart Deception. So with Kudushim Studios, Parables of the Set Apart Deception and Intercession are going to be the first projects to be officially released under the studio. Intercession is a comic book and uh, Parables of the Set Apart Deception, well, Parables of the Set Apart as a whole, it's a multimedia anthology series and you will get Parables of the Set Apart Deception and have other versions of Parables of the Set Apart that will come out in the future. The earliest release date of any of these projects is 20. Um, first quarter, at the end of first quarter 2025 with my current schedule and stuff, I am working towards getting these things released by March 2025. That is the goal. And soon we would be putting together our Patreon, our Kudoshim Initiative Patreon, that would uh, give uh, tears and perks that we would be able to see the, a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff of uh, what is going on with the Kudoshim Studios project, such as access to becoming a beta reader for the Intercession comic series, as well as playtests for Parables of the Set Apart Deception. So all, we have all of that in the works with Kiddushim Studios. So your boy is a busy boy. <laughs> we're still going to continue doing what we do with the explanations. Eventually, once, well, soon the channel should be getting re-monetized. I fell out of the monetization program due to some requirements I had to submit that I wasn't able to submit at the time when we got monetized last year, which all that lines up with the ultimate testimony that is linked to Kirishim Studios but I just wanted to keep it to Kirishim Studios only a well, testimony of my life I should say that Kirishim Studios is a part of but just was keeping things relative to Kirishim Studios only for this podcast uh, but yeah we'll be getting the channel re-monetized soon and probably eventually no, hire someone to help us out with the to help me out with the um, content because there's no longer there's no longer enough hours in a day for all the for everything that i want to do in a sense in regards to explanations explanations my goal with explanations is to make it sort of like the christian ign if you guys know what ign is that you want your number one source for but i don't know if ign is considered a number one source i remember at a certain point they were like big in the gaming space like all things went through ign but in a sense you Go to place for Christian entertainment reviews. Currently, my passion is in comic books, and I just prefer comic books is my preferred way of leisure time. So that's why you see a lot of comic book reviews on the channel. But most of preferred well, video games are my preferred leisure. But for like content wise, I honestly prefer to just review comic books because those are fun. They're quite easy <laughs> videos to do, and I enjoy it a lot. I kind of am running out of a content cadence until bill comes back around with nine remnant books but we just have a few star cross stuff and some other i getting some christian comic book recommendations to check through i think i might also take a look at Am of god and some other things i'm pretty sure i'll find i find stuff so this week i just wanted to rather than we did biblical proportions last week and i just wanted to take a little well just talk about the projects i have in the works now that we have full pinups. Some other things that you would see from KJ Studios across the channel is our um, fight the good fight 
Fortnite game series that is connected to Kiddushim Studios. And uh, I want to make that an actual game series inside of Fortnite. So many different iterations inside of Fortnite. The next one is... um, I will soon be doing live streams, developing the next one directly in Fortnite. After well, those live streams will come only after I finish the parables of the remnant issue four top down Christian shooter. <laughs> the top down shooter based off of parables of the remnant issue four. I am done with a lot of the gameplay systems, right? I just needed to take because I just needed to take a break because I had a lot of things going on between April and now. And now things are kind of back to steady schedule for me. So we're gonna start back that live stream to finish off that game and then start our remnant game so yeah and what else we also have merch explanations merch coming soon pp boy in his explanations motto hoodie which is luke 12 was 48 which says for nah i can't forget my name of that the motto scripture of explanation to whom much is given, much is required. That is his motto scripture. Jeez, that slipped my mind after I said the verse number. <laughs> but yeah, but the, our motto scripture based off of Luke 12 verse 48, which says, to whom much is given, much is required. Uh, that that scripture just did a backflip out of my brain after I said Luke 12 verse 48. But yeah, we would have merch on that available uh, via... Spreadshop. We're using Spreadshop for it. The link for that could be found on the Explanations YouTube channel. Coming close to the middle of the month, we will have a, a my goal is to have the merch shop running at the middle of the month and our Patreon, the Kiddo Stream Initiative Patreon, where with four tiers, uh going for four tiers. I also spoke to Bill Rupp, he is down to do it, on where one of the tiers would be I would be awarding a free well it won't be free because he actually paying for it you're covering you are covering part of the course for the um book but you would be getting a remnant book with your patreon subscription to the kidushim initiative um thing i just working out the pricing with him for that uh, so that we could just like launch forth into that but yeah so yeah i think that is it i talk about it all things Kiddushim Studios related. It has been God is God is good, guys. God is awesome. <laughs> Not just when things are going because I have been going through highs and lows. It's been a lot of highs and lows with, with everything for me personally recently. But it's just I just thank God for what He has done, what He is doing, and what He is continuing to do. And I hope my little rambling today encouraged you to just trust in god but many remember the scriptures three scriptures but the most important one i find out of those three is many are the plans of a man's heart but it's lord's will that shall prevail i learned that the hard way <laughs> coming to 2023 well not really the hard way i think i over like i don't want to be one of those people that you know like over exaggerate their testimony i know a lot of people like that <laughs> not going <laughs> we ain't going into that but yeah, I don't want to over-exaggerate this testimony because I haven't had a hard life. I've pretty much lived a privileged life, in a sense, here in the Caribbean. Love my life, love my family, love everything that God has done in my life. And I am just excited for what he has been, the connections he has given me and what he is doing. Like the path he is leading me towards with Kiddushim Studios. And I just want to thank each and every single one of you that tune into these videos and have been like slowly being hyped up about the projects and the small things that i've revealed about the projects previously i i'm just excited to know what you guys think of it when it eventually hits the market so yeah i think that's it for this episode of the keto shape initiative podcast i this is one of the first few times i've just gone I think I only paused the mic once in the past, <laughs> the past 40 minutes looking at this thing and I'm realizing, oh, we just crossed the one hour mark on my recording. I probably with the editing, it might be an hour and 10 minutes or so, something like that. So yeah, that's it for this installment of the Kiddushim Initiative podcast for our July installment. We should have the one and only, the myth, the legend, Joe Spicer on 
for the podcast. The owner of Starcross Comics and the creator of um, God, well, the G.O.D comic book series and biblical proportions. He should be the on for the next episode of the podcast. Otherwise, I would have to find a way, something else to rumble about. I just haven't had like that much ideas really for the podcast and i mean with a podcast i don't want to waste people's time if i don't have an idea i don't want to waste your time and i don't want to waste my time if i don't have like something to talk about i rather just not talk about it than try to like be like rush together something that is like half baked you know so with this one i was just excited to talk about this cnd pinups and i got that release within my we got that release to talk about what to talk about Kiddushim Studios, I mean, we literally have a website and everything. It's available. Everything I talked about the projects is on the website. I also did, I had a period of time I used to overshare a little bit too much of my projects and stuff, but in times when I shouldn't be oversharing about the projects. But now, like, we have a website and stuff, so it's more than um, acceptable to talk about it. <laughs> But yeah, that's it for this episode of the Q2 Shame Initiative podcast. Be sure to leave a like on whatever platform you're watching it, which is either YouTube or Spotify. Be sure to check us out on all socials at The Explanations. And next week, you should you could also look up Q2 Shame Studios on all socials and find all of them unless someone here in this podcast decides to go and steal the... Well, we have the domain, but unless someone go and steal like the Instagram and stuff, uh, don't do that if you're here in this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, you can find us on Kiddushim Studios on all on all socials coming up next week. And be sure to use code Set Apart in the item shop and check out our Fight the Good Fight game. Yeah, that's it for me.